Hello and welcome to the channel Tech and More as part of the ongoing series that is Salesforce automation testing. Welcome to another video wherein we'll be discussing and seeing some frequently used XPath functions which are I mean which are of great utility while you're writing down your XPaths or your test cases, right? So as you can see on the screen right now you have the functions that we'll be discussing in the video. So without wasting any more time let's first of all jump to the main function or the first function sorry which is contains. So as you can guess or as you can get a hint from the name which is contains it basically uh, while you're writing an XPath and let's suppose there there are I mean of course there will be numerous elements and you want to locate all those elements that contain a specific value it can be a class value it can be an ID value it can be uh, I don't know text or something so this contains can be of great benefit to you. Cool. Now, uh, one might question that what is this? I mean, the, the text in white and the text in green. The text in white is basically the syntax of an XPath wherein the contains method is being used. Now, if you are a bit confused that what is an XPath, what is this tag, uh, and, and what is tag name, what is attribute, what is constant value or attribute value, right? So you have to go ahead and you have to refer to the playlist that of which this video is a part of and therein we have created videos talking about locators talking about experts tags and everything so you go ahead and have a look at that first and then come and watch this video cool but yes for the folks who are already learning it from the very first video let's continue now uh, i will not be explaining you the syntax because i think it makes more sense to explain the uh, the, the example first and then the syntax makes sense on its own right so let me go ahead and let me copy this example expert and if you can see in the in the slide right now, you will see that there is a screenshot of the Salesforce instance. And since it's a Salesforce automation testing, we'll be using a live dev work to show all our examples, right? So let's go to a live dev work, uh, which this from where the screenshot was taken. And let me go ahead and let me navigate and let me write down an XPath. So I'll click on inspect. And uh, now what I, what do I want is that when I write down this XPath, if you see it closely, this class value or this attribute value so it says that write down an xpath or it says locate elements which have a tag and that contain the class value as slds card footer action right so let me go ahead and first copy this attribute value and paste it here in the inspect element right so if you see closely there are four results one of four let me zoom in for your better understanding one of four right so i want to write down an XPath that will help me locate elements which contain this class name, right? So let me go ahead and let me copy this. Cool. So yeah, there we are. So if you see it properly, uh, I mean, let's refer to the first element for, for the first time. So let me see. Here. Yeah. See, this is the A tag which we have written, and then it says contains at the rate class, and the class value is this. Now, if you see, there are four results. So four elements on the web page are such which contain this class right so this is what a contains function do uh, of course i have uh, n number of uh, you know uh, functions to explain so i will not be able to get into a lot of detail so the intent is to tell you the syntax to tell you the relevance of that method and to uh, share the example with you on a salesforce org so you get a gist of how to write an xpath on salesforce right but at any point of time if you feel if you have any questions or anything please feel free to comment and we will respond to it as soon as possible right this is all about the contains method now let's go and have a look at the next function which is writing xpath using and or or so if you have been into the it's even for two to three months or if you have just you know learned tech in minimal possible manner you know about and or logical operators right so these can be used in xpaths as well so if, of course you can go ahead and have a look at the syntax but let me again as mentioned take you to the example so i will be copying this xpath and i'll be pasting it here so let me go ahead and let me inspect and let me paste this here right oh that's bad that's bad okay so see yeah so you might question that why why this thing happened I'm a, i mean why it was not able to locate it earlier because this search box was not open right so if the element is visible then only it will be able to go ahead and locate an element right so if you see it clearly it says input tag at the rate placeholder is equals to search and type is equals to search so this is the key and or or logical operator right so basically what it says is 
So if you have a look at this element that we have traversed to, input is the tag, right? And placeholder is one of the attribute, which is this one. And search is its value, right? And then again, type. Type is another attribute. So let me go ahead and let me look for the type. This is the one. And then you have the value as search, right? So it says that go ahead and locate an element whose placeholder is search and whose type is search, right? So it says that if both the conditions are being satisfied, then only go ahead and find this element. And in case of or, uh, let's suppose if, I mean, I don't know if let's suppose if I change this type to SEE, -E, it will not locate the element because it is not satisfying both the conditions that is in and it has to satisfy one and two both, right? But now let's go ahead and let me change it to or that is changing and to or and it will go ahead and identify because one of the condition it satisfy that is as the rate placeholder equals to search as the rate type equals to search wherein the search spelling is incorrect but still it will go ahead and locate because one of the condition is being satisfied so this is how you use the and or logical operators while writing down x parts cool now let's go ahead and let's have a look at the next me method which is writing x path using text right so this is the syntax and again, I will go ahead and I'll copy this entire XPath for you. And this is a screenshot of the XPath. I mean, this is just here for reference. Uh, you need not focus on this because I'm actually showing you how to write down these XPaths and how the elements are uh, fetched in a practical manner, right? So I've copied this XPath and I go to Salesforce org and I'll go ahead and I'll paste it again, right? So if you see here, just let me go ahead and let me navigate you to this one. See, so we wrote an XPath that had to identify this element that is looks like you are free and clear the rest of the day, right? Now, uh, instead of me going into, uh, you know, the class and everything, I just wanted to locate it with the text visible on UI. So it is one of the most easiest and one of the most frequently used method in it while writing down an XPath, right? So what you do is you simply go ahead, you use the div element or the div tag, which is given here. And uh, then you go ahead and you say the method text bracket equals to, you just copy this text and paste it and you have it in front of us, right? But you have to, you know, be clear, very, very clear of one thing contains basically what contains will do that the first method that we discussed. So even if you skip one full stop or a lot of words from it, let's suppose if you skip looks like right and if you only use you are free and clear the rest of the day then also contains will look, look go ahead and locate the element right because it just looks for that keyword and it doesn't focus on the entire thing but with text you have to be very very sure you have to give the exact text which you want to locate so for example if i go ahead and if i just remove full stop then also it will stop identifying right so that is the difference between text and contains this is a this is an interview question again right so this is all about text method you wanted to know. Now the next one is writing XPath using starts with, right? So as the name suggests, it will only focus on the criteria of locating an element wherein the text or this, you know, this, this locator will be from the start. Let me pause my speech right now. Let me first copy the uh, XPath and let me show you how it does. So I will go ahead and I will paste it here so it, it first of all you have to see it is showing me seven results one of seven right so let me go ahead and let me cool <clears throat> see so what it says is that go ahead and locate all those elements that have the text that is starts with text i mean starts with can be for class starts with can be for, uh, I don't know, area label or any attribute for that pattern, right? But it said, use start with, with text, right? And give the text as view, right? So when I go ahead and when I search for it, it shows me the relevant buttons, right? See, view calendar, view all. And then, okay, okay, okay. View opportunities, view accounts, view contacts, view leads. So basically all the elements, in this DOM, whose, whose text start with the view word will be located using this XPath. This is what starts with is, right? Now let me go ahead and let me take you to the next method, which we'll be discussing, which is writing XPath using indexing. Indexing, as the name suggests, 
that you know serial number one two three four five so you might encounter situations in your projects or while automating wherein you might need to index and when you need to index when the elements are duplicate right so you, and you know that this element is always going to come here on this spot that is when you use indexing a tip for you here uh refrain from using indexing if you're not sure about the location of the element for example if you feel that this location of the element might change tomorrow do not use indexing because let's suppose you use indexing one and tomorrow it goes to two then your code will break always always use indexing at points wherein you are 100 percent sure that the indexing will not change by the development team cool so without wasting any more time without me saying a lot of words let me simply go ahead and show you things in practical so i'll copy this xpath and uh, as you can see in the screenshot it is i mean we have used this xpath on the app launcher so this is how you navigate to app launcher you click on these nine colorful dots and uh, you click on view all and from here in you go ahead and you search for this i mean you open this uh, place to write down the xpath and here in you paste this right so how to use indexing smartly or how to understand indexing is let me zoom it a bit so uh, first of all, let me remove this index, right? So if you see, uh, I did use a simple XPath wherein I say use the P tag, use the contains text, and wherever you find an element that contains the text service, just go ahead and locate it, right? If you remember, just one or two minutes back, I told you that is the difference between contains and text. In contains, it it just follows the keyword; it doesn't focus on front. Uh, I mean the before and forward words, right? But for text, you have to give the exact word. So yes, we have used contains here, and we say that locate all the elements whose text contain the word service, right? So it says it has six elements of that matter, right? So two. The number one was okay. Let me go ahead and see it again. The number one was service. The number two was service console. The number three was service appointments. Number four was service contracts and service resources and service territories, right? So you have six elements. Now, <laughs> what you want to say is that go ahead and always locate the element which will click take me to the service cloud or the service app, right? Now, uh, as this is a Salesforce standard functionality, there are very, very less chances that this might change. Of course, if you know Salesforce, you know that this can be easily dragged and dropped. So it is in your hands, right? So if you refrain from changing the positions of it, then you can simply go ahead and you can simply put this entire X path in one of the braces and give the index as one. So it will now it only shows you one unique element and it navigates you or traverses you to this one, which is just give me a second. See, it will always navigate you to this element, right? So this is all you need to know about uh, indexing, right? So let me take you to the and now <laughs> so that's all of course this chained xpath is something that we did not discuss here because you know uh, i mean this is something that will that can be better discussed in the next video wherein we'll be talking about the access in xpath or in very simple words how to use preceding following and all of these right so uh, i'll be removing the chained xpath text from this presentation because we'll be discussing it in the next video so you need not worry but yes for now just go ahead, uh, pause the video at syntaxes, go ahead and start writing your own XPath. Uh, and before that, create your own dev work in Salesforce and then write down the XPath. Now you might question that, you know what, I don't know how to create a Salesforce dev work. So we have a solution for that as well. We have a playlist wherein we are talking about the, uh, you know, Salesforce concepts to know as a Salesforce tester. So in that, if you go, you'll the first or second video is all about uh, teaching you how to create a Salesforce DevOps. So go ahead and have a look at that video and then start writing down the experts using the very frequently used functions. And make sure you learn them very effectively because you know they're very, very important and they will be used a lot by you while you're actually automating the test process. Cool. So that's all. And see you in the next video wherein we'll be talking about how to write down the experts using access, that is preceding, sibling, etc. So yeah, I hope you like the video. And uh, if you if you feel that this video or this channel can help your folks, please share, subscribe. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Thank you.